Welcome everyone to another edition of Office Hours here on Friday, 2 p.m. as always. Joined this week by Noel Scarpula and Zach Alter from Jukin Media. And as always, my partner in crime on the partnerships team, Scott Elchison. So again, thank you everyone for being here and uh, happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday indeed. Excited to be here. Uh, Scott, you for... when you said partner in crime, you didn't actually need to make the gun thing. You don't have to actually be a criminal. I'm trying to switch it up. You know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to find my my voice and my aesthetic on this stream. Totally. I haven't really nailed it yet, so I got to keep practicing and trying out new, uh, I don't know, things. I appreciate it. And just because we have the finger know. guns doesn't mean we're bad guys. We can be good guys too. <laughs> can you work in a wink? Can you work in a wink and a gun? Is that okay or no? Like the. I don't know. I don't know if I'm that smooth though. Not yet. Work work on that this week, and you can try that out next Friday, Scott. All right, that'll be that'll be my homework for for next week. Uh, is you know define who I am on, on the live stream <laughs> yeah, via via hand motions. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we got them right. Names will use them. Um, True. So, this is well, with that, I mean, like, let's just let's just dive into the the, the conversation today. So, so Zach, we, we kind of start out all, all the conversations this way. Explain to us what what is Junkin Media, um, and am I saying it right? Is it Junkin Media? Like, what, like, what's the proper <laughs> you know, way to go about this? <laughs> there's, there's, listen, there's only one N in the name. It's only it's Junkin Media. However, if you were to look at the percentage of of people that call us Junkin versus Junkin, it's probably fifty fifty. And to be honest with you, if you're emailing us and want to partner in some way, I don't care what you call us. You can you, <laughs> you can call me whatever you want. Like we accept everything. Um, listen, my name is Zach with an H. I've been having people spell my name wrong the entire life. Uh, you don't trust Zach's with K's, by the way. It doesn't make sense. We can get into that later. But um, <laughs> so Jukin Media um, company's about a decade old. We're based in uh, L.A. And our business is based on real people. Um, so what we do on a daily basis is we scour all of the major um, video sharing platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Reddit. Uh, those are the major ones here in the States. But if you mm -hmm. go abroad and as you look around the world, you've got about 7,500 different platforms that we are scouring every day. And what we're looking for is the best sort of real life video content, user generated video that folks have mm -hmm shared and uploaded um, with their family and friends. Um, is we, there, find, we consider to be the best of it. We acquire it. Um, we slide into people's DMs. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and that's our business. So we've got a library now of about 65,000 videos that we've called and sourced from all across the world. Um, and really, just one last thing, like if you think about like what is this video, think about your own personal life. It's not influencer content. It's people who you know, have kids and dogs and amazing vacations and go to amazing concerts and have whatever experiences matter to you in your life, you are, you have a tendency to pick up your phone, hit the record button, and then you share it with your friends and family on Instagram or any other platform. So that's the kind of content that we find and source and ultimately at the end point help brands utilize in marketing. And so like you mentioned a lot of these platforms that I think we define as like like the like the culture of the internet, right? Like this is like where like that culture forms. Right. Is there one platform that's better than the other? Like, are you seeing like Reddit has great videos? Are you seeing Imager has great videos? Like, are like where like where's like the? I guess who's the best is what I'm trying to get at. You know, let, let's try and settle some feuds of the, of the internet <laughs> here. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't think there is a best. And I, you know, full disclosure, I'm not in the weeds on the acquisition side. So uh, you know. It's actually funny enough, it's an incredibly manual process. So we have like a base layer of technology, but there are, there's a team of about 50 soldiers that sit across the world. And so literally 24 seven, 365. So I imagine that question would probably range country to country. Mm -hmm. But it, what is interesting is the types of content that we are seeing shared on different platforms, right? Like for example, and, and probably not totally surprising snapchat and tiktok is like where where like where the weird stuff lives right well uh, define so how, how do you define weird because it's like to me like that's just like fantastic i would put well, it like I mean, tiktok has been great <laughs> we can all tell by your mustache weird is fantastic in your world 
Um, <laughs> true. All right. Sarah <laughs> returned. Good, <Let's> sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it actually, well, we have some data that we just uh, called in terms of where, you know, the type of COVID related content that people view. It just ends, you know, it's a younger audience, right? It's a, it's a sort of teen Gen Zennial audience. Um, and so I think you just stuff probably a bit more suited to younger tastes, not as mainstream. Um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube are certainly a bit more mainstream at this point. So it it's all over the place, right? Like, um, if you look at COVID specifically or COVID-related content specifically, you know, YouTube, it's interesting. YouTube is the stuff we've found that, like, people are looking for, like, the science behind COVID, like information and science. Facebook okay. is, like, news and viral trends. Instagram is like quirky and funny meme type content and Snapchat and TikTok. It's, Still it's weird. the weird, the weird stuff. Like it just is. So again, I'm a 35 year old, you know, white male who lives in Scottsdale. So like I am about as mainstream as you can get. <laughs> just, um, so, <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you're like that bottom layer and he kind of goes up and down from there. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm boring. I got a two year kid man i'm i'm deep into daniel tiger and the pout pout fish and so uh, <laughs> i like, had the weird i had the weird <laughs> yeah, noelle's glasses you can tell she's she's on the weird side so what do you mean these are blue the blue things they're working really well without a glare so oh nice and, with and the uh the anti-glare stuff or like, but like yeah, anti-blue yeah. light to help with your eye eye strain yeah, yeah. the problem i, I have right. with nice. that though is that every time i'm on a video call people can see the reflection of my screen or just weird blue things in my eyes so i look like a cyborg so maybe i'll yeah, reach my final form like one day. Right now? Is that what we're no 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 saying? yours are perfect i must have the <laughs> knockoff version but if you wear glasses and the glare hits them just right you can look like people can't see your eyes so you can look down at your phone and they have no idea that you're not looking oh. at the screen sneaky tactics um but it, it, things you learn in quarantine i guess yeah. right <laughs> exactly um but i think you know it's interesting like you know people ugc is like it's like the the democratization of content. So like, I don't know about you, but my 68 year old aunt uses Facebook and uploads videos. And then my 15 year old cousin uses TikTok and uploads videos. So it's sort of like the full range of content um, across platforms. So, yeah. And then I think that, uh, to add to that, there's, yes, they're weird, the TikTok, Snapchat situation, but there's also that variance of like, family, right? So mm -hmm. I come from a, like my daughter's seven, so a little bit different than Zach's daughter. So we're really delving into TikTok during quarantine and we're doing those quirky, weird things. And that content is coming from a really cute family perspective. So again, it depends on, I think, also who's doing the uploading rather than where they're doing the uploading. Right. And it's interesting to a point, that's the one thing I've, I've seen more and more on TikTok are family accounts. There's mm -hmm. one account, um, I forget the name, I'll look it up, but they have millions of views and it, they're just fantastic. So I'm starting to see more and more family accounts of like whole families trying to get in on this on this sensation that is TikTok to become like, like you know, internet famous in a sense, which is really super interesting. Um, and everything that goes along with that from like dance routines to just like casual day to day, how people live their lives, you know, in their home with full families that are now at home, uh, which is pretty. And cool. they just hit two billion downloads. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, I mean, can you just pull that up? Like, is, is that a real? No, fact? I saw an article about it this morning, and then I saw somebody that said it took Facebook like thirteen years to hit two billion downloads or something. And I, now look, downloads, active users. There's, I'm sure there's yeah. that number is somehow not made up, but but there's 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 a <laughs> number. But, <laughs> But I think objectively, if you look at it, yeah, I'm just pulling it up. They top two billion downloads. I mean, that's insane. Mm -hmm. In, it's just insanity. Yeah. Well, I mean, also, I mean, if you want to talk about, like, they also had, it was like billions of dollars of marketing spend when it first launched, right? right? And so, again, I think this is just, as we've been talking about, like, COVID-19 as a trend accelerator, like, there are just some... Yep you know, companies that are just in a position where it's like they are just at the right place at the right time. Like, I think sometimes this is the perfect definition of luck. Um, and TikTok is probably one of those solutions where it's like they built it and it just happens to be, you know, an all time uh, environment for them to get users and downloads and, and all I mean, that. 
I am living for everything that Twitch does with his family. So I don't know about everybody else. It's a daily thing that I have to go look at. So yeah. I never thought I'd be a TikTok fan. Turns out, loving it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I've learned so many new dance moves. I've so thought, many. I've, I've thought about this a lot, right? <laughs> if, if, I, if I was a dancer, this would be like my uh, portfolio. I would be. I would build up a, a portfolio on TikTok, and that's how I would go and interview and like get gigs or contracts or whatever it might be. And maybe if you're um, lucky enough, eventually get turned into a Fortnite emote. There you go. Have you Goals. thought about bringing the pineapples to TikTok? Have you thought about it? <laughs> no, those so those are actually on unsplashed right now. Uh, right. I thought that that would be a good place to bring the pineapples, but uh, <laughs> not yet. I haven't thought of anything creative for that. You know but, what's this is interesting? I wonder how many people, and you can use TikTok for dancing, like talk about a trend accelerator. Will people use or have people use their social media accounts as a portfolio in some way? Like, right? Like if you're, if you're, is Instagram the new photography portfolio? Oh, is, yes. Like, for, is yes, TikTok sure, a dance sure. portfolio? Yeah, like do you need, you don't need an actual portfolio anymore. People just Google you the minute they find you, like want to interview you. I tell people that all the time in interviews. I'm like, be careful what you put out there on social media. Don't think I'm not looking at you. <laughs> if you guys were hiring, here's a question. If you guys were hiring uh, a social media coordinator, manager, something, mm -hmm. would you use their ability to, to gather a following on their personal account as a proxy for how well they do? Like, do you consider that? Like, this is a question. Would you consider that? I think I would, because I mean, in a sense, it shows, in a sense, it's a proof point of, yes, they already know how to build a single brand. They have the skills to do that. And like, they can apply that to our brand or whatever, like, like the role that we, 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 we'd be hiring them for, right? So it's like, I think there's there's value in, in growing that because the best proof point I think you could have for, you know, a candidate or somebody that, that's, that's qualified for a job is, have they already done the job and can I do it super, super well? And what's the tangible way that you can see that? And if you're looking for social media, like, I think one potential point of that is do they have a big following themselves yeah. now again like there's there's a lot across all of that right but i think you know the answer would be yes i think from my from my perspective um but that's definitely not the, the end all be all <laughs> by, by any means get ready but, for more resumes coming across your deck with tiktok handles at the bottom of them <laughs> yeah i know i that's think it's gonna happen i think people are yeah. gonna put their find me or there whatever rather than References be like, just look at me. <laughs> yeah, like here's here's me. Here's how it works, and <laughs> and so and so I think this is all like like a great just like framing of what you guys do at Jukin, right? Like this is the conversations you have. This yeah. is the the content that you produce and collect and curate in order to kind of bring like authenticity in the real world into in, into brand marketing. Yeah. yeah, I think that's yeah. I mean, I don't know if that was. A, a tee up or a question, or if you're looking for commentary, but I'd be happy to give it. But, but whatever, you know, here, whatever you'd like works for us. <laughs> I think, um, you know, the there there will always be a place for professionally produced content. Uh, there will always be a place for influencers. But I think, like you know, we've all seen the charts and the stats and the numbers of the number of video uploads skyrocketing every year. There is an un paralleled ability and it'll only get greater for people to express themselves their uniqueness their individuality and I, I really think you know there's a silver lining on this big dark cloud that is the last six weeks is the creativity that we've seen from people I mean mm -hmm. it is just incredible the stuff that folks have come up with from you know you see stuff from like the 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 parents who have set up like uh, theme parks or roller coasters in their living rooms to um, like all the trick shots that you've seen to um, <laughs> I love the woman have you seen and it's been it's been sort of copied a number of times woman who does like the video like which quarantine character are oh, you that one's been great yeah. Yeah. fighter uh, yep. like pose I mean just that kind of stuff and we've seen I think you know I talked to our actors we've seen about 75,000 uh, COVID related yeah. videos over the last six weeks uploaded by people. And it's everything from like, you know, early on you had like uh, people were, were, you know, we've never in our lives walked into a grocery store and not been able to get what we want, right? It's never yeah. been a thing. And so when like that all started happening in the second half of March, you saw all this video of people sharing pictures and images of like empty shelves, right? So it's stuff like that through to like, 
you know, people doing balcony performances. It sort of started in Italy, I think, was like the first wave of those balcony performances. So I think for us, uh, sorry, my two-year-old is just having a blast in the background. So if you hear high pitch. Oh, that was amazing. That yeah. was a high, I would give that like a mezzo soprano up she, here. She's doing she that. Heard, must be watching the stream. That's the only thing that could elicit that kind of reaction. She heard me yeah, talk that was it. He saw Daddy on TV. Yeah. He saw Daddy she heard me talk about Italian uh, balcony opera singers and thought she'd try out. Um, but you know, that, that is the beauty of what our business is, obviously over the last six weeks, but for years before this, is we find the best of what real people are creating, and I think it allows us to get a, you know, a step or two closer to what, what's actually on the minds and hearts and creative uh, uh, you know, palettes of real people. Um, so it's, it's really cool, it's really interesting, and I think the other interesting piece about, you know, what we're going through and, you know, the jokes are already starting to be made is like every COVID ad looks the same. Mm -hmm. I, there's a video, I think there's a YouTube video. Every COVID ad looks the same. It's like uh, serious piano music followed by videos of real people and uh, <laughs> the words unprecedented times. Um, we've actually worked on a lot of those. So it's a lot of our content. <laughs> Facebook and so, so, you're, so you're the reason that there's like continuity across yeah. every single... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everyone is speaking the exact same language right now, thanks to us. Right. There you go. <laughs> exactly. I think it's, the, the, the point is, is like, yeah, there's there's some homogeny there, but but it truly is, there, there is, and I, I wrote this in a, in a presentation, but there is, I don't know that there's ever been a time in, our, in, in a life, in our life, where marketers have the opportunity and the responsibility to be globally relatable. Sure, not everybody is experiencing the same thing. There's different levels of people's pain from this from this uh, pandemic. However, it's impacted everybody. Everybody has felt it. And so I think there's a really unique moment where marketers have to be, they have a responsibility to be authentic and relatable, but also they have an opportunity to relate to everybody like they never have before. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's a really interesting point, being globally relatable. And I think that Jukin's uniquely positioned to help brands, you know, make those relationships at global scale. So can you guys just talk about a little bit how brands work with you and what are some of the most useful applications you've seen in your tenure at Jukin? Sure, 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 sure. So there's there's a couple, there's sort of two or three primary ways that, that brands work with us. The legacy of the business, and still a big part of the business, is we work with creative agencies and creative teams at brands who utilize uh, individual clips from our library in spots, right? So if you've seen the Facebook Never Lost, the Walmart, uh, Lean On Me, right after Bill Withers passed away, uh, Cox Communications, P&G, Hefty, there's a bunch of them. Um, they're licensing those individual clips. They've got a production team that's putting them together. Um, so that's one side of the business working primarily with creative agency. The other side of the business and where we've worked with uh, the media agencies within IPG is a um, we've, we've built sort of owned and operated brands that live across social, um, all the major social platforms, and then all the connect like linear connected TV platforms. Yeah. And, uh, and, and what are those brands? Just so people yeah. that are on the stream, like I'm sure they, they probably know like those brands, but they know that they're actually powered by Juke Media. Yeah, right. so Fail Army and People Are Awesome are the two largest. So Fail Army, obviously, as the name suggests, is a physical comedy brand, uh, primarily like a younger male audience, um, but much more than guys getting kicked where it counts. Like it's, okay. it's, it's, it goes beyond that, although that is a, you know, a solid core of the audience. Um, <laughs> you gotta love Shade and Fruit Well, we can assure no one's been extremely hurt in the making of the yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah. Newport, never not funny. <laughs> um, so that's Fail Army. Um, the opposite of Fail Army is a brand that uh, our largest brand is actually called People Are Awesome, and that's all ordinary people with extra doing extraordinary things, incredible talents from athletic and extreme sports to dance and art, and just really, it'll make you feel like you've accomplished very little in your life, um, but you'll be inspired to <laughs> more. Um, do, any, do any of them have a live stream? I don't know. I think that's one up for us four right here. That's true. <laughs> that's that is true. true. While they're strapping GoPros and wingsuiting mountains, we're sitting in our apartments <laughs> and homes talking to each other on Skype. Who wins now, fancy people? 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, we have a brand called the Pet Collective. Uh, it has about 40 million. So we have about 200 million fans across these brands. Uh, the Pet Collective is for pet owners and the pet obsessed. Um, and then we have two sort of younger brands in the incubator. One's called This Is Happening, which is uh, an editorial and lifestyle brand primarily geared towards Gen Z and young millennial creators. Um, so that's a brand that's going to cover the main lifestyle topics, food, travel, events and issues, entertainment, but do it through real life user generated content. And then our final brand is called Poke My Heart. And that's your soldier reunions and gender reveals and all the sweet emotional stuff that, like, even in your darkest day will make you choke up, even when you don't want to, like when you're in front of your buds. Uh, don't watch that. Um, so five <laughs> properties, um, they've sort of born and raised on social, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We now have, I think, almost six million followers on TikTok across those brands, so really explosive nice. growth there. We actually, the um, we have linear... Uh, channels on a variety of connected TV platforms mm -hmm. for those brands. So Fail Army and the Pet Collective and People Are Awesome. And we actually have a linear only brand called Weather Spy uh, that we just launched a few months ago. So it's a really diverse um, distribution platform uh, or distribution footprint rather. Um, but yeah, and, and what we interesting what we found is like, again, back to like the relatability and sort of universally, um, I guess relatable uh, nature of this content is everywhere those brands go like people love them and people watch them just because it's the content you know it sort of is a glimpse into your own life yeah yeah the um, for me you guys always get <laughs> on Snapchat that's where I always oh. peek to like people are awesome and, uh, and and fail army that's where I'm always like getting you know introduced to, like to, to that to that content so like that that's great and then so we have these brands you know that are, are kind of all you UGC and how it, how it comes together in in that standpoint and then so like what are the actual like ad opportunities like what like let's get yep. to like the nitty-gritty here are we yep. talking 30 second ads, 15 second pre-rolls, like where and how do you, like does a brand place themselves into this content? Yeah, so the easiest sort of, so like, yeah, from easy to complex is like I said, creative agencies, we're working licensing them clips. Um, we have a robust media sort of pre-roll, mid-roll offering. So pre-roll on our YouTube channels, mid-roll on our connected TV uh, channels, that's all long form content. It's not just UGC, but we've licensed in third-party content, like traditional TV and film content on those channels. There's about 350, 400 million monthly video impressions available directly, mm. programmatically. You know, if you want to get nitty-gritty, 95% viewable, 95% yep. rate. Bring, like, bring the, this is why we're here. Like, I want to eat this stuff up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, Feed the brand. You want me to pull out my spec My yeah. spec <laughs> Um, E-pay, fast tags, all the tags, all the verification platforms. Um, so no, it's it's premium um, video, premium mid-roll, pre-roll, um, device agnostic across all platforms, which I think is really interesting. Uh, the connected TV piece for us is not something that we've stood up overnight. That's a three or four year endeavor. We just won Digiday Award for best publisher pivot to TV. So that's a big part of our offering. Well, congratulations. Um, thanks. Um, and then the other side of our business, <laughs> is a branded content business. So again, super authentic, relatable content uh, or clips or videos. So we are creating, whether it's originally shot, which is obviously for everybody on pause right now, but, but we create branded content utilizing UGC at the, as the core of it um, that brands can integrate uh, with and then we distribute that across our channels. So um, I'll give sort of an, an, an IPG shout here. Uh, Last fall, like Q3-ish last year, we worked with the Coca-Cola team on a Powerade campaign. Okay. Uh, so Powerade had a sort of a, a, a Gen Zennial, multicultural teen and young adult uh, target. I love this new word you're using, Gen Zennial. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't make it up. We found okay. it up a while ago. He did not. <laughs> did, I think it might have been the Powerade team was the first person I heard it from. I, they, I, they used it. We Googled it. Apparently, it is becoming an industry term. But we're gonna we're gonna say the Coke team made it up, and somebody overheard, and then it all went awry from there. I love yeah, all the clever cool. age the classifications we've <laughs> no, developed. Glad to have you here to fact check Zach on all his stuff. So. I know. Well, I mean, can't get a word in edgewise, so I'll just fact check it. <laughs> That's my design. Um, but, but, you think about, but just on a, on a tangent for a second, 
millennials are very different. I'm a millennial and I am not right. the millennial that's 10 years younger than me by any stretch, right? Like, or nine. So like, I think the, the Gen Zennial, that sort of cross section of Gen Z and millennial fits. Anyway, so, so they had an alignment with street ball. So we went out and found a bunch of these amazing sort of real life street ball clips of guys dunking and crossing people over and the celebrations. And we set those, um, we went out and hired a writer from Deaf Comedy Jam and a oh, nice. spoken word poet. And they created and crafted like these spoken word homages to street ball that we then, mm. uh, per, that he performed and we laid under um, a variety of street ball clips that we went out and found. So, so basically we create and distribute this brand of content. If I can give one plug is that We've seen a lot of brands who have come to us and said, hey, I want to be active around Mother's Day and Father's Day and, you know, looking further out back to school, but I don't think I'm going to be able to shoot anything. I'm not going to be able to work with the partners that I traditionally work with who, who shoot branded content. So I think in this moment when traditional shoots aren't really possible, yep. um, there's there's a lot of interest in our ability to create to efficiently and sort of in a turnkey way create content, um, and it, it's feel-good, authentic content that people want to see. They want to take a break from the news. So I think that's that's a big opportunity for brands right now is to partner with us. Um, yeah, well, so really good to, to that point, I was going to say, like, so we, I guess it was last week's podcast, we had a great conversation about live mm -hmm. and how, like, live and going live is going to be changing, in a sense, the whole production model. And just given the constraints that we're in currently – you know, it's it's kind of pivoting from this idea of you know highly produced um, and not and maybe not as risky content to uh, more granular, more gritty um, live content. But it's a bit more risky because you are going live with somebody, and it's like you can't redo something once it's already out there. Um, right. And so it's thinking about well, you know, to your point, like how do you make content during this time and the way that your content is sourced and made and you know, is very easily, you know, can be done at home with influencers, with the, like, the teams you have in that kind of like um, socially distanced, safe, in, you know, safe environment. Um, so it's a really great solution at a time when big production crews can't make make content for brands. I think it's I think it's great. Yeah, and I, I think. Say, oh. Go ahead, Noel. Go ahead. <laughs> He's so upset. <laughs> I will say no, because I'm, I'm currently working on a project that generally would have been shot completely in studio. We would have been with talent at the same time, asking them questions in a very fun, like, interviewee format. And now we're, like, leaning into Zoom and webinars and this type of thing that we're doing right now and still getting their reaction to the clips. And, like, we're yeah. still with the talent, but far, far away. But we're making – our production team has this ridiculous talent that I've learned in – even faster in the last 24 hours that they can literally make anything beautiful and it's coming together so quickly. And like the amount of time that it's coming together is mind boggling to me. Um, but we're leaning into what people have and the, the accessibility of being able to do stuff like we're doing right now and being able to use our library at the same time. So we can mm -hmm. kind of get that feel of live and real, but not completely live to like, right. Not to go back, right? Right. Oh, Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, no, and I think you touch on a really interesting point. One of our trends for 2020 that we identified in our outlook was democratized creativity, and basically, all consumers have the resources available them to them now to be their own creator, to be their own influencer, and you know that nimbleness and that agileness that you're talking about from your production team is largely in part to this digital acceleration that we're seeing as a result of COVID and. Actually, from a consumer and viewer perspective, I think that there's been a lot of, you know, love for these authentic moments that we're getting from people reporting the news from their house or doing segments from, you know, their kids' school right. session, whatever it might be. So really interesting. Well, I mean, you know, don't forget that America's Funniest Home Videos has been on the air <laughs> for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was... And it's <laughs> And so like, going. I think there's there's always been a consumer appetite for real authentic content. Certainly, you know, and we've we've got this presentation or th this this sort of history of UGC that we've looked at. And if you look at like 
America's Funniest Home Videos, and there was a bunch of like sort of derivative clip shows. That was sort of, you know, 1990 through 2005. And then within about five years of each other, give or take, YouTube shows up, Facebook shows up, and smartphones show up, right? And the ability to capture content and the ability to share content explodes. And that was yep. like 2000, call it seven to 12 ish, right? Like I know face, but that's when Facebook turned into a video platform. So it's interesting. Our co-founder actually was an executive producer. Our founder rather is an, ex or was an executive producer on clip shows. Hmm. And so his uh... job was to go to the mailbox and cause you know, remember at the end of America's 20 home videos, they'd say, if you have a great video that you want to see, mail it to us, mail it to us. Yeah. So yeah. he'd yeah. go to the, to the mailbox and this was like 08, 09. And he went to his bosses and he said, Hey, there's this thing called YouTube. We should be going out and searching for it rather than waiting. And they said, no, 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 get out of here, kid. And he was like, all right, I will gladly get out of here. And, I'm gonna go <laughs> and so that's what he did. That was the, the, the genesis of, of Juke and Media. And so I think, Ryan, to your point is like, I think now, you know, it's just the, the, the explosion has only continued, but I think there is the, the democratization of content, the ability, the willingness, the ability to, to be who you are on the internet. You can be the weird guy with the mustache who loves pineapples. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and and I now have a sleep podcast, so like just work that into my ever growing portfolio of uh, um, weird internet accomplishments. Media, media Back creation. of all trades. Back uh, of all trades. Yeah, you really are. So I think I think that we are we are at this moment where the ability's been there for a while, the willingness has been there for a while, the technology has been there for a while. But now there's nothing else, right? Mm -hmm. And so now we are seeing people um, truly explore their creative creation abilities. You mentioned earlier, I don't know, if, maybe this is the TikTok account. Have you seen the family who does the family Olympics, like the quarantine Olympics on TikTok? No, I have not seen them yet. Who like challenge every day. It's brilliant. And it's like three teenagers and their parents. Like it's not, it's it's just really interesting, the, the, the sort of the coalescing. Mm -hmm family you it's just it's it's all a really interesting right. yeah and but that's like i think you know this is and this is what we're like like that trend is like again accelerating where we we see it in the consumer side of things but it's, it's starting to translate rapidly to like the enterprise side of things right like it's it's very acceptable to just like give somebody like the latest iphone and it's well the newer iphones are potentially going to have like you know, 8K and 4K recordings, and then like actually like record in like the the like the, like the sound wind or the sound profile. I guess that like major theaters produce and put movies in, right? So it's like it's a professional device. So, like we're seeing that translate from like consumer focus to enterprise, um, and wow. I think it's a it's super valuable, right? Like this is going to like completely change how people make content and make and, and make it like um, I guess relevant. And I think the one thing I've been thinking about is it's like now is it's just like having the content that is native to a platform is super important and it's like more relevant than ever, right? Like the idea of not just making it like, like a nice ad and inserting it into a platform, but like recording from like the core voice of what that platform is and how it works is just like, I think it just brings your message across more authentically. Um, I think that's something that we've been talking about for, you know, like a, like a year or two, especially on Snapchat, because I just, I never, I didn't like when I got like, like, like a hard stop and it was just like a, like it was, it, it was like shocking. Yeah. Uh, when you saw like one of those ads come by, but if you get it filmed, like, you know, from somebody that has an iPhone or, you know, a GoPro, like, and just puts it in there, it's just, it's just more natural. It fits better. Um, it kind of, it feels like supportive versus like interruptive. Yeah. It, it's really interesting. <laughs> I actually saw, yeah, a hundred percent. I think utilizing content that's native on the platform, I mean, native, you could just say the word native four times and it makes sense. Right. You know, like, yeah. You're watching, you're watching, and we actually have a product um, that we built out where we create six and 15 second mm -hmm. ads for people that run you just, our- You just took my next question out of, <laughs> out of, out of my mouth. So, do you yes. want to and then I'll answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's, yeah, let's do that. So, um, so can you guys <laughs> tell us about your, your, your UG6 product? How does that work and how can brands get involved with that um, production? 
Well, Scott, thanks for asking. Yeah, you know, um, just trying to solve, you know, like you like, brought it up. We would have never <laughs> talked about it. Yeah. You know, that, I got to tell you, that wasn't a really na- a very native insertion of, of the question. <laughs> Well, um, we're live, baby. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> anything can happen. We discussed yeah. it. There, uh, there's some grit on this show. <laughs> so, actually, about two about two years ago, um, six second ads had sort of, you know, uh, reached, you know, mainstream, if you will, and and there was this insight that we developed um, with a study we did with um, University of Southern California. Um, sort of two two primary insights. One was um, platforms that adopted six second ads, users were really getting used to and liking the shorter ad format. Brands we found just anecdotally through conversations were really struggling because used to 15s and 30s, how do you all of a sudden condense a message into six seconds that's effective, that gets across the messaging points, etc. So that's thing one. And then we had some brands that started to do it. So we took, we took um, a, a variety of six and 15 second ads produced with UGC and produced sort of in a traditional format. And we, we uh, sent them to a study group with USC. And what we found was that six second ads, uh, all ads, but primarily or especially six second ads that were produced with UGC were more memorable, more engaging, um, better recall. It was about five or six different metrics that they really outperformed traditional ads. So we launched a, a product called UG6, uh, like a play on UGC, get it? Um, but basically, right, right over my head on that thank, one. No, thank, it's thank God he cleared that out. Thank God he cleared yeah, that out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and we have developed the slightly less less catchy UG15. That just doesn't really go as well as UG6, but wow. it's there. Um, but effectively, UG6 is a product where we produce six second ads utilizing UGC, utilizing clips from our library, plus obviously brand assets, logos, messaging points, all that. Um, those turn into quick, very efficiently produced six second ads. So you're a, a, dealing with a, a content type in UGC that's instantly impactful, right? You see, you see a baby do something cute, you don't, or you see a baby giggle, right? You don't need to know what's making them giggle. You just know babies giggling get you. You see a <laughs> guy run into a, uh, uh, a sliding door, you don't need to know why he was walking outside. <laughs> it's just funny. Um, so it's instantly impactful content, incredibly efficient to produce. So you sort of solve for the, um, the issue of brands not being able to sort of uh, uh, effectively deliver a message in six seconds. You solve for the ability of not having to send a team into a studio and expensively produce a six second ad. Um, we then run those as media on our aforementioned channels across social and OTT. And then the brand gets a license to use them across their social and digital platforms and in their digital media buys for three to six months, depending on how long. So it's a really incredible uh, uh, offering. We've, we've worked on it with everybody from Marriott and W Hotels to Walt Disney World to Kraft. Um, so it's, it's been utilized in a variety of um, industries. Um, and we've found really, really fun and great results. And um, the one last thing I'll say is, and, and we've talked to a couple of the folks who, who work on the dynamic content team at UM, is you can almost get to a dynamic content piece there, right? Because when you can create assets so efficiently, like the Walt Disney World campaign, for example, um, uh, they actually have four different audience targets. Um, it's not just people with kids, it's young adults and, and newlyweds and weddings and and so we were actually able to create a number of different assets, all with the same campaign theme of like magic happens here, mm-hmm. yep. but utilizing different clips. So we have one clip of a little girl running and giving Mickey a hug. That's obviously for parents. But then we have other clips of people who are quite obviously on a bachelorette party flying <laughs> around one of the roller coasters. <laughs> yeah. so, um, listen, I don't get people who go to Disney World. I'm not but we could I, be offending the millions hey, of people. That I went there right for now, spring so. break, I'll have you know. I went to Epcot. It was fantastic. Yeah, no, but see, that I get, though. I get that. Epcot. I went to Epcot just recently with my daughter, and I was very jealous of everyone participating in Around the World and the Food and Wine Festival. So I get Epcot, but, like, no, I don't think on my bachelor party, if the day ever comes, do I want to be going on the tilter, tilter world. Or, or taking know, a safari guys. through the animal kingdom. Teacups, teacups, teacups is what I meant. Have you been to the new Star Wars section of the parks? Uh, I know. 
That was, that's it right there. Merry I'm, time. I, May the force be with you. I am it's thrilled fun. and excited to take my daughter when we, you know, when the time comes. She's probably a little young. But point being is, is Disney is one of those universal places that, that people enjoy. But people, the marketing for it has to be different. You can't mm -hmm. reach right. Scott with a message about, you know, taking your kid to Disney. So what we did with them is we created a number of assets. So what we're doing with brands is we can say we can create six, eight, ten different assets, same messaging. You plug them into your buy with us and with others, targeting segments of your overall general audience target, and you can get to a dynamic, creative uh, uh, place. So it's it's really interesting. It's something that, again, again, I think in this environment, has a specific amount of relevance to brands. So do you do you think this desire for dynamic content and you know the rise in popularity of the six second ad is going to be the death knell for those longer form creatives? No, no, because we've been talking about that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think, but I do think to Scott's point, it'll become more platform specific, right? You will see big cinematic pieces on big screens. You'll see more user generated uh, uh, built pieces on the social platforms. I did see something funny. You know, the, the Facebook never lost ad. If you, you guys, everyone's sort of seen it, their COVID response mm -hmm. ad. And it, um, I, don't, I don't think I've actually. Are you saying that. no? I feel like I the entire I've world's been avoided. It. Well, you should watch it. I cried twice and I, I knew it was coming because we made it. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I was like, <laughs> humble brag, I guess, right there. <laughs> we didn't make it just for legal yeah. purposes. No, for legal make. purposes, we didn't make it. There are clips. <laughs> Droga, Droga did an incredible job of making it, but we, we contributed a bunch of clips. But what, what was really interesting about that is, and universally, I think it was like two thumbs up. People liked it. But I saw somebody on LinkedIn say, you know, Facebook has been telling brands and publishers for years, shorter content, make it quick. Don't put your brand in the first three seconds. That's against the rules. And if you look at that ad, it like goes against all the rules and best practices that Facebook has, has delivered to people. Um, so that's just a funny anecdote. But I do think, Ryan, you'll start to see just, I think it'll allow brands, and you've already started to see it, right? who are tailoring message for the platform. Um, but if you think about six seconds, what we hope we will see is that brands won't just cut down 15s and 30s into sixes. And I don't care if you use us or not, but shoot specific six second ads with a specific slant and angle to them. Um, don't just cut down 15s and 30s because that has the probably the lowest chance of, of working. Mm. Well, that's some good insight. You, Ryan, you want to hit that wow insightful button? Oh, yeah. Wait, hold on. Can I video this so I can show my wife? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the biggest accomplishment of uh, Friday so far. I, I will send I you. Work some of the day. I will send you. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll come on screen. We'll, we'll, we'll get it clipped um, yeah. for, for you so you can kind of put that in your trophy case. Um. Um. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So. That's a good breakdown of that content offering and kind of how brands work for you. So I do want to pause for a second as we had some great questions in the chat to bring up. This is one of the fun interactive parts of the show is that there's a chat with people talking in it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, well, I, I think, I think in general, we, we, we have one viewer that was uh, hashtag triggered by our conversation on, on Disney world. So uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, swine is fine out there. Um, but, <laughs> A, a great question that came in from George George Nick two four one. A question for the panel: You know, are Twitter screenshots memes? Oh, oh man, am I? That's close? all you, but that, that, that's you. Okay. I mean, personally, it's it's. I would say it's a meme format. Yeah, I would say so. I I, I think, but it's specific to Instagram. Right, like it's a it's a it, it's a format that is specific to Instagram. I would qualify it as a meme. Yes, I'm with Twitter's, Scott. Uh, yeah, go with Scott on that one because, if I'm being honest, Twitter is like up here. But you know, <laughs> in, in terms of classification of memery, it kind of you know ladders into this great sandwich debate of whether a hot dog is a sandwich, depending oh, on know. what your definition what is. You know, it, it could really go any way. You could be on the complete anarchist side where everything's a meme, or you can be a hardcore traditionalist. So just, you know, one of those never-ending debates, I think. This, Ryan, this, now that you've brought that up, 
is a hot dog a sandwich? This this is a I deep, <laughs> deep, 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 dark no, hole. Not. I <laughs> I personally say no. There there is no way. But um, I don't say this from a point of of knowing. I would say a meme has to have some sort of creative addition to it right like you can't just mm. put a picture up and that be a meme like it's gotta have i guess crying jordan is a meme but the first person who did crying jordan yeah i don't know it's interesting so i think the creative format has evolved from like advice animals and like the rage comics to more of like a scenario happening and then applying that scenario into like a new conversation. Right. And so like there is some remixing that is now like 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 involved about it and there are so many different formats, but I think it's now a like a classification of like social commentary and you know content that is on um you know social channels. Because I would say like, you know, you know, I guess what is it like all content are memes but not all or all memes are content, but not all content are memes is like the best way to describe it. It's kind of like one you're of talking like yeah, you're memeception right, right now. Yeah. yeah. Scott, you did well in the SAT, didn't you? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> um, and so we have another question here. Well, we kind of talked about it. Should, should are memes considered art? Some yeah. of them, I'd say for sure. Yeah. yeah, I think I think democratization of content and art, right? Like. Yeah. Listen, there's some stuff that is actually considered art that I don't think is art. Right. right. I so, just take banana down in down in um, our Basel. That one. Right. That one. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely memes are art. Yeah. And, and the eye of the beast. Yeah. And particularly so, infuriating on that art. If you guys look up Boy with Knapsack, it was a former painting in MoMA and it's just two rectangles. So maybe one day we'll make it as an artist. Or you guys can have your kids start working on it, and we could submit to MoMA early, and we could all get a slice of that pie. Uh -huh. Yes, that's a, yeah. I like I like that pie. Yeah, I we gotta make. I think we gotta train our that. eyes more. We gotta train our eyes, and so we don't quite have the touch yet. I mean, like memes, I think we got you know good good quality memes. I think I can kind of sort that for you, but art, I'm half and half on. You know what's interesting? In in uh, in London, maybe. Six months ago, we actually there was an event, and we actually set up a a, a museum of UGC, hmm. like a physical. I mean, like an installation is a physical museum of UGC with, you know, sort of the mate Chewbacca mom and Pizza Rat and and sort of the history of UGC. So that is a blend of physical and digital worlds coming together. And that and, that, and if that isn't a core tenet of the lab, the blending of the digital and physical, then I don't know what is. <laughs> Um, so this man, this stream is really is capturing it all today. So we haven't talked about pricing yet and lead time, and we want to know. So you don't have to give us exact pricing, but as an estimate for our for our means for our, our means for our media teams and our clients and people that are that are interested in working with you, like what are like the I guess like are is it tiered pricing? Like what like what are the starting packages? What are those estimates and pricing? And then how quickly can a campaign be turned around? Are we talking minutes, hours, weeks, months? Um, We've seen it all. <laughs> oh, no, one, no one from our production what? team is on the stream, right? Right. Yeah. What, what, what's what's the promise? Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'll, I'll tackle the, the timeline question first. Um, like, to be perfectly honest, that's the beauty of UGC. It exists. And so... You know, you always have the variable of approvals and turnaround times and how quickly can can your side go, right? But I can tell you we've gotten six-second ad and even branded content campaigns live within seven to ten business days, if that. Um, and we can we can move quick, right? Um, so it's, it's certainly a much more efficient from a time perspective uh, than shooting something from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you know. Anywhere from seven to ten days, I'd say standard, two to four weeks to get yep. some stuff live, and that includes approvals and um, reviews and all that kind of stuff. From a pricing standpoint, you know, it really is uh, uh, dependent on the execution. But generally, look, you're looking at branded content campaigns um, that start in the forty to fifty thousand dollar range um, and go up to you know seven figures. Um, you know, if I'm saying 40 to 50 on a live stream, there's wiggle there. Come on. What am I going to give <laughs> you my course. bottom dollar here? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I, the answer was I, I didn't think you would. <laughs> um, 
uh, UG6 um, from you know because we talked specifically about that. Those packages start at around 50k, which gives you um, a couple assets and then media across our channels. And then if you're looking at media across our channels, you're in the sort of low 20s CPM wise for um, for pre-roll and mid-roll, you know, standard 15 second placement. So, yeah, like, you know, I can I can tell you more like our, our summer sponsorship packages, Mother's Day, Father's Day, back to school are in that 100 to 200 K range. And that includes two to three pieces of content plus a bunch of media. So there's you know, we sort of build it based on what you guys are looking for. Right. And so as we, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the clock here, and we've entered the, the last 10 minutes of our, our conversation, which to me wow. feels like we've been talking for all of five minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, this, so this has been we're, so fun. We're by. Yeah, right? My workouts flew by like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I was working out. Yeah. I stopped almost immediately <laughs> once, we're, once, once quarantine set in. Um, oh. So I guess like looking at like, so – in this deck that you had sent over that we kind of like looked at previously, like there was like trends or content trends that are happening. Mm -hmm. So at, at, as you're starting to see more and more, you know, memes and content be developed, like, is there a, like, what is like, I guess like the sentiment that you're seeing in, in this content? Is there anything from like, there was like maybe at, at the start, it was more um, concern and worry and trying to figure things out. And now we're maybe moving more towards like a, like we understand it or like we're at, we're at a, like a new normal. Like, are, are there any like kind of like themes across the content that you're seeing? And then, you know, on top of that, like what new maybe formats or interesting things are, are starting to happen or circulate that we should be aware of that I can potentially capitalize on this weekend and grow my following on TikTok. <laughs> Is this a personal question or a professional yeah, question? Yeah, this is a personal so, question for the last half, half, yeah. half a pen. Uh, so look, I don't, yeah, I, I'll, I'll answer that in two parts, right? One is there's sort of um, overarching, ever-present themes that we've seen sort of, so if you look at, if you look at this, um, you're, you're looking at about a six-week stretch. I think March 15th, as I sort of look at it, I don't know if that, maybe the 16th was a Monday, but that was sort of the first day that, businesses, non-essential workers were home, right? So you're really looking at a six week uh, 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 period where lives, lives globally have changed. Obviously the disease started before that, I'm not trying to minimize that. So, but if you look at the six week stretch, you sort of, we sort of bucketed into sort of three two week periods and looked at the specific trends that, that sort of came and went. And there's about a five to 10 day lifespan hmm. on these specific social trends but i think throughout i don't think you've seen like generally at the beginning it was worry and then it moved to like fun and now it's about i don't know survival or whatever i think you've seen a mix of fun and 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 sentimental and concern and appreciation for for essential workers and healthcare heroes they just manifested themselves differently so for example mm -hmm. in the first sort of few weeks uh, a couple of weeks, you saw the Wuhan Shake, I think, which started as a TikTok uh, dance challenge, mm -hmm. um, and that was obviously there was there was sort of some some utility to that because I think it was teaching you how to you know keep your germs away from yourself. Uh, yep. As I mentioned, you saw all these videos of people uploading uh, empty stores and panic buying and hoarding, um, but then you also saw like videos of like toilet paper juggling, uh, like soccer and otherwise. Um, so, you know, you have everything there from fun to, to fear to and, and serious topics to, like, balcony performances. People go on their balconies and shake, which with that was meant to be, like, heartwarming and, mm -hmm. and community-driven and uplifting. Um, you know, sort of as you move forward on the, the trend timeline, you had, like, the push-up challenge, right? Again, mm -hmm. like, the, I think it was C10, Give 10. I didn't do it. I'm with you, Scott. I, I'm, Wait. I'm this is funny because I totally tagged him in the challenge. Like, you know me. He was like, you know me better than that. There's no way I'm doing it. I was like, come on. Not a <laughs> I'm, ride, I'm riding the hell out of my Peloton. So my yeah, thighs are. are in great shape, but I still can't do 10 push-ups. Uh, <laughs> biceps are overrated. I think push-ups work. I don't know. Whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's a full body workout, but it's, it's all good. <laughs> my single favorite trend or my single favorite, have you guys seen – the people um, who put on In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins and yes. they open up their they, they, they slap all the cabinets and the drum solo. <laughs> like that to me is my favorite one, Nat King. So you see, I think there's these doses, doses of creativity and heartwarming moments and um, education and, and, and 
sort of, um, you know, people getting to know one another, getting to know themselves. So I think those have sort of been present throughout, and I, I do anticipate that continue. I think everyone's trying to get a variety of experiences and content in their lives because, you know, if you overload on one, you'll, you'll really find yourself in trouble. Yep. From a key theme standpoint, um, what we found is heartwarming moments continue to pop. Right. And again, they look differently. There's different trends, but 100 percent um, virtual connection. A mm. um, lot of requests coming in from brands, whether it's professional, personal. Um, we actually did a spot for American Airlines that I had a clip in. Personally, my my wife had this brilliant idea to send some of my daughter's favorite bedtime books to our parents because she didn't, you know, and, and her brother. And they've been reading her bedtime stories over FaceTime. Wow. That's adorable. Yeah, right. That, that, that melts that. my heart. I don't even have to see yeah, it. He's, he's got a sensitive side. He's got a sensitive side. Yeah. There you go. Um, so stuff like that, those, those ways that people, and then creativity, trick shots. And, and again, th those three themes are, have been present throughout. So I think, you know, those, I think when that deck, we said those are like themes to bet on. Like mm -hmm. you can't go wrong. Yeah, it might be similar to what others are doing, but again, it's because... <laughs> It resonates. It works. People like it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. And I think so, Zach said it really well. I, I, sorry, I, I just no, feel like Zach said it really well in the webinar we did last week together. Um, that all of these trends are super important, and to follow them and to be a part of them as a brand, but to stay in your lane as that brand. Like, don't you don't need to you don't need to change who you are in order to fit the trend. Find the trend that speaks most relatable to your brand, and you will win every time because. That's what the audience is looking for, that you understand them and you're still doing the thing that we want you to do for the brand or giving us the service or the product that you would give us anyway, but you also are not ignoring what's happening. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So, well, so I would love to have said it was me, but it was Zach and I just got to say it on this one. So, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, hey, we'll give you the credit on, on Thank you. the live stream. So, so, give, her the, give her one of those wow, insightful buttons, Brian. All right. Yeah, yeah right. Hey, yeah, hit it, smack it. Wow. Um, Triggered. And then so brand, like, brand safety, though, because like, I know like there is sometimes concern to be surrounding UGC when it comes to like, the brand safety. So how are you navigating that challenge at Jukin? Yeah, that's um, – so UGC in a, in a wide uh, world can be scary. I'll tell you right now, the curation of it is our business. So real quickly, we see uh, – I mentioned we've seen about fifty to 60,000 – COVID-related videos over the last six weeks, we've acquired about 500. And that goes for everything. So we we tend to acquire about 150 to 250 videos every single week while seeing about 30 to 50,000 every week. So brand safety, if you look at our sort of acquisition criteria, it's quality, it's emotionally compelling. Brand safety is high on that list. We're not acquiring anything that, that – you know, a brand wouldn't want to be around. At the same time, especially on our linear channels, we have to put our channels that feature our content through standards and practices. So every way that we program it, so we're thinking about that ahead of time. So right. while brand safety and UGC is a concern, I can hand to God tell you with Juke and it's not. That's mm -hmm. great. That's fantastic. That is a great way to end. Yeah, now, uh, there's, well, there's well, a chop it off right there. <laughs> well, we actually like to we like to end it with a couple of things. One, we'd love to get some content recommendations from you guys. What have you been listening to, watching, playing, whatever during quarantine? No, I'll go for it. Um, uh, so I didn't love Hunters. I don't know why I started with that. I didn't like, but I tried really hard to love it. Um, I have finished. Oh, well, I'm in the middle of season three of Killing Eve. It's oh. killing me that I have to watch it week by week, but it's fine. Um, I finished Ozark, of course. It's, I, oh, I have a seven-year-old, so she takes up the TV. Um, mm. But I do plan on watching Secret Love for all those A League of Their Own fans. Get to oh. it. The new Netflix um, documentary, it's about two of the women from the American League and how they had to live in hiding, like their whole love story. It's going to be great. Super I'm watching it tonight. <laughs> um, there's so many more. I don't know. Uh, what do I listen to? I listen to my daughter sing on TikTok. That's what I've been listening to. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Share, yeah. share her handle. <laughs> we'll, we'll get her famous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, for me, uh, listening uh, in a sentimental mood by John Coltrane, that 
the, the radio station that's attached to that song in Spotify. I, I'm a jazz listener, especially when I'm working. Um, TV shows, like, too many to count. Uh, my wife and I, I'm, I shouldn't say this, we just finished Too Hot to Handle on Netflix. It's <laughs> the trash show you've ever watched in your life. And we don't watch that jazz TV. We did Hunters. We just finished Homeland. I thought the ending of Homeland was great. Ozark. Um, and then the one recommendation, um, I just filed this yesterday. I'm a golfer. I love to play golf. Mm. There's an Instagram account called Beautiful Golf Courses, and it's it's just images, uh, amazing sort of like drone type aerial footage, oh, uh, but cool. just incredible golf courses. Uh, it'll it'll give you some serious FOMO, but it's just a nice little reprieve from my day. So shout shout to the beautiful. And we don't even own that. Oh, uh, that's not. Well, a, there that's not a, there's no intent. <laughs> Soon. I will say if you want to but follow will, anything on TikTok, to follow on TikTok if you need it, you have to follow Twitch and his wife. It brings every joy to the world in every aspect of life. So for all those that are Ellen fans, now Twitch fans, watch him and Allison and your life is great. And point of differentiation, Twitch not the platform, people. Twitch the former America's uh, So You Think It Could Dance oh, contestant who's yeah, Ellen's like, DJ. Yeah. yeah. He won and now he's awesome and the dad and all the things. So. Well, awesome. I think you should pay me for that endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we, 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 have, we have a large focus audience here. So, I mean, I think, you know, it's that, like that can be arranged. Well, so <laughs> we are we are at three o'clock. I want to end on these last three questions. These are three questions that we, we ask everybody. So it'll be super fast, super quick. And they are. So, again, what does it cost to work with Juyakin? What is your size? And what is the lead time? It'll be rapid fire. Rapid All fire. right. Uh, 200 million fans across social and connected TV. Um, lead time, we are, you know, anywhere from one to four weeks to get something live, depending on how quick you and your client want to work. And cost, um, we have media media opportunities starting at 25K and content opportunities starting at 50K. Fantastic. Amazing. That was great. Well, Call me when you need all of those things done for you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so to all of our viewers and everybody in the chat, thank you again for a fantastic Friday afternoon. Uh, we'll be back again next week, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, same time, same place, uh, different people. So it'll be great. Um, and if there are any last questions in the chat, no. I think just one comment from American Gooner12. What about some love for some Miles Davis? So, um, yeah. Love Miles. With that... So, Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Noel. Thank you, Zach. It's been a pleasure. Everyone, we'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. Later. Thank you, everybody.